The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 27th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. Well, go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the Russell and the semis. The semis are down 25, about 8 tenths, and the Russell just slightly flat down two points. The Dow is up 177, the S&P up 33, the NASDAQ 217. That's a half a percent, 8 tenths, and 1.7% 1 1 move to the upside. Trades are up 1% as well. That's 135 points. Gold is off three bucks. Silver is off, uh, is basically flat. Lights we could is flat. Natural gas is up two pennies. And a 30 treasury printing out at 130.13. That's off one point and 10 ticks out there. So let's begin. Let's begin with the new news out here. The new news is the new profile that is attempting to form inside of the NQ. So it's the upper right-hand panel. Let's just simply expand out the chart. What we'll see here, a new profile with support at 12,899, resistance at 13,199. And if price were to get above that 13,199, just be aware that there is weekly resistance, profile resistance, that is, at 13,348. Profile won't be confirmed until this evening. I've reset it many times. It seems to be pretty solid out there. Now, this profile, let me turn off the green, the uh, weekly profile. Give me a second here. We'll turn them off, turn them on. But to make the point uh, that I want to, I want to just try to declutter the chart just a tad. So let's turn off those weeklies. And now what you can clearly see is I want you to notice how this new profile has formed above the prior profile. What I specifically mean is we have a higher low. And we have a higher high. And that, from a profile standpoint, is a sign of a bullish market, not a bearish market. In a bearish market, we'd have just the opposite. That doesn't mean that price can't bust through support and start a bear run. But with regard to the profiles out there, and to the extent that you believe the NQ is either going to push the markets higher or lower, well, one, we do have resistance. So it hasn't exactly broken out. And uh, but, but that new profile, especially if it does take hold tonight, sending an interesting message. It is much different than the message of the ES Mini or the Dow or the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 is just consolidating with inside his profile, so no big deal there with 1722.71 being support. But in the case of the ES Mini, it is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. Has for three days now. Same thing with regard to the Dow. Those are signals of a change in trend. Now, with regard to the ES Mini, well, it has found support at the center of that bullish structured weekly profile at that 4081 level. The actual low so far this week is 4080.75. So we know that 4081 is a very key area of support. That if we were to see price close blow, it come tomorrow because that's a weekly level we're looking at. That would then suggest move back to the 4000 area. Okay, nothing else really to report here with regard to the dailies. So let's move over and go take a look at. Um, uh, some of our other equity future charts out here, some of the white background charts. So we'll move over. We'll take a look at those. No other real patterns that are I, have been identified. We are going to form bar number seven. 
or it appears we will form bar number seven in the Dow Equity Future contract. So it's possible that early next week we could get, uh, it could even be tomorrow, a, a TD9 count bottom pattern that uh, forms out here. I don't see that in the others, at least not just uh, yet as we speak. So let's go take a look at the intraday charts out here. Let's do a couple of different things. One, let's take a look at, I kind of overlooked, let's take a look at market conditions. Now, what I mean by market conditions, we were talking about profiles out there, but what are the market conditions that we're dealing with, generally speaking, with regard to the different five time frames that you and I can track? We can monitor weekly, daily, 240, and a 60-minute on this chart. This is the S&P 500. And as we speak right now, there's 141 instruments trading above profile, 183 below. So the pressure is to the downside for the ES Mini for each of its time frames out there. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, here's where we get the uh, you know choppy market out here. Why is it choppy? Well, right now, the 60 minute time frame chart is bullish. The others, weekly, daily, and 240, they are each bearish out there. So we know that the 60 minute, well, let's go take a look at the 30 minute. But we do know that the 60 minute for the NQ is bullish and we'll take a look at that most certainly. If we take a look at what's going on intraday, meaning 30 minute time frames out here, we have bearish crossovers for the S&P, 102 above, 213 below. So the S&P is bearish across the board. And inside the NQ right now for its 30 minute time frame, we've got, it's doing all the calculations, 31 above, 28 below. So the NASDAQ, 30 in the 60 minute, a bullish profile support bullish profile um our bullish a bullish market breath Boom! stevie's figure it out and whereas the es mini is bearish right so here we've got the charts for the es mini so let's just take a look at these we know that the es mini is up towards resistance that's the bottom of that daily profile when you get up towards resistance if it really is resistance the market's going to move lower what you like to see is a topping signals or resistance levels for those intraday charts so let's go through them one by one five hour chart it's right up to resistance. It's bearish structured profile. That's at the 41.1150 area. Mark that on your pad of paper. Why? Because the 240 minute profile level is 41.1150 as well. At 41.15, which is where price got up to, that is a TD9 count breakdown area on the 120 minute chart. So on the top row, daily at resistance, bottom of its daily profile. 3,300, the four-hour and the five-hour charts, also at resistance, top of their profiles, 120-minute chart at resistance, at its TD9 count breakdown level. Now, the cool thing here is if you were to see a close about 41.15, that's going to signal to us, really, let's call it 41.18, 41.19. A close about 41.19 says this rally has legs, and we should expect or anticipate that the rally will at least last through tomorrow out there. If you look at the bottom row, the bottom row, 41.15, TD9 count breakdown resistance, and it formed a TD9 count top. 41.15 is very key. 41.13.50 on the 30-minute time frame chart. The 15 and the 10 each have topping patterns. A TD9 count and roads momentum indicator signals that are present out there. So across the board inside the ES Mini. So if you took a short a little while ago inside the ES Mini, I cannot find any fault anywhere in doing that. The only fault could be or would be that NASDAQ. The NQ out there, because remember, it's it's short term time frames were bullish. So we get back from the break. We'll reset this set of charts out here. We'll take a look at the NQ, and of course, I want to take a look at anything that you would like to look at as well. One of those instruments we're going to look at when we do come back from the break is going to be VUZI. And that's for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Still a mixed bag out there that mix uh, with the uh, Russell and the semis trading to the downside. Otherwise, all the other U.S. indices are trading to the upside. We're taking a look at the charts here for the NQ. We went through the ES Mini in detail. We're going to see really an exact opposite set of patterns out here. Now, in the case of the NQ, we know that there's a new daily profile on the black background charts that hasn't shown up on the white background charts yet. Again, that's an early detection tool that I'm using. But right now, we do know resistance should stand at 13,199. And I suspect price is going to go target that level or 13,175, which is its daily green oscillator and change line. That's being confirmed here by the NQ uh, five-hour chart. It's got an A to B equals CD pattern. Price is taken on resistance. Now, this bar doesn't complete till 2 p.m., so hard to say whether price will take out that resistance level. That resistance level is at 13,000, and I can't see it. Got to blow it up. Sorry. Sorry about that. That stands at uh, 13,100. Uh, so and above that is 13,134 is TD9 count breakdown resistance. So the NQ is trading in the resistance area. The 240 minute chart is not trading in the resistance. It still has that A to B equals CD pattern. It's a bearish reversal candle. The 240 minute chart says I want to get all the way up to 13,241. Now, I don't know that that will happen because of that new profile level that we've got. The 120-minute chart, you can also see, well, it's in bar number eight. Now, this uh, two-hour time frame bar here is going to complete at 12 noon. So about another 50, another 40 minutes out there, 41 minutes. Um, and so you could form, the 220-minute chart could be signaling a top between 12 noon, quite frankly, and 4 p.m. So not real hopeful there that that's going to identify a top at this stage. And that the reason I say that is when I look at the 60-minute chart, it negated its TD9 count top immediately. There wasn't even a one-bar hiccup out here. This tells us about a very strong momentum move, at least for this time frame, to the upside. Now, it still has an A to B equals CD. So if it did generate a bearish reversal can on a 60-minute basis, that would generate a Gartley sell pattern. Short of that, Price should go target the 13,186.75 level. That is its next TD9 count breakdown area out here. So very bullish on that 60-minute time frame. And we know that the 60-minute inside the NQ, we took a look at its market breadth earlier, was bullish. So we're not seeing anything there in the 60 minutes. And the 30-minute chart was also bullish. Now, on the 30-minute chart, to gauge whether or not there's going to be any kind of short-term top, the beauty here is it's 1120. 
And uh, so at 11.30, this will have completed a TD9 count top. Now, I do not know whether it's the high of bar number nine, which I can give you that high, or what's going to take place in the next nine minutes. I just don't know. But currently, it's 13.1850. Whatever that high is, right now it's 13.1850. If you did see a close above that on a 30-minute bar, that pattern gets negated. And that would tell you just a ton out here. So the 30 and the 60-minute charts are the best ones to be watching inside the NQ out here. Let's go switch over and take a look and see all the 30-minute charts, if they're all worth watching, or is it just the NQ? Q's out here. So here we get to the 30 minute charts. Upper left is the ES mini. There's that TD9 count top uh, that has uh, formed out here and will complete uh, when we get to the uh, 1130 time frame out here. Now, prices trade above its green oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. This signal is neutral. We have inside the NQ, well, we've got that TD9 count top that we took a look at out there, so we don't need to go over that. The Dow's got a roads momentum indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profiles, support at 33,493. And the Russell in a mine, it's got its mind of its own out here. It is right now testing TD9 count breakout support at 17,3560 for a 30 minute time frame. So, how do we summarize this? We summarize this in that the Dow has already formed its top. And the ES has a topping pattern, but it's neutral right now. And the NQ is likely to uh, complete a TD, will complete a TD9 top in uh, just about seven and a half minutes out there. So I pay attention to the 30-minute charts. I pay attention to the 60-minute charts as well. Let's go take a quick peek at its patterns. We take a look at the ES mini there, just that TD9 count top that's in place. Now, that gets negated with a close above uh, 4108.50. That would get negated if we had a close above 410850 out there. We're at 4108 and a quarter right now, but 4115 is a real key level of resistance that price needs to move above. Um, this NQ, as we as you can see here, immediately negated its TD9 count, but you've got a TD9 count on the Dow. You've got a TD9 count on the uh, Russell. So we got topping patterns in three of the four, and the fourth one negated that topping signal right away. So I say today it's all about the NQ, and it sure looks like to me it wants to make that move at least at 13, 199 level out there. So that's a review of the equity markets out there. Of course, if you've got some questions, please write in steve at tfn.com or give us a call 877-927-6648. Of course, you're inside the Tiger's Den. We'll take any ping, private or public. So Let's go take a look at our first request out there. We only have two. Both of them are from Dan. Of course, I would love to hear from you as well, folks. So let's take a look at Vuzi. V-U-Z-I is the uh, ticker symbol. And let me make sure I'm in the right spot. I am. V-U-Z-I is trading at, I just want to confirm this, looks like 407, but it's 408. And it is trading right up, Dan. So you've got a new profile that has formed today. And we can see that price ran into resistance at 413. And 413 is the top of that profile. So if price can close above that, what price should do then is at least go target its swing high from April 12th. Now, that swing did volume of 482,000. You're already at 530. So price is pushing into that. But it still has to clear where the sellers are at at 413. And if it does do that, then it ought to make its way up to that 439 level. And if it can clear 439, then you're looking at a move up to the 483 range. On a weekly basis, what Vuzi has done, this is Vuzik Corp. It has pulled back and tested and so far rejected its oscillator and change line, but trading below profile. So not that it's bullish, but at least a key level of support has held. And the monthly time frame, what's holding us support is the bottom of its profile. The bottom of its monthly profile is priced at 399 so let's bring Boozy on home. I think Boozy is uh, getting ready to uh, rally for at least a couple days. That confirmation would be a close about 413. We've seen uh, four consecutive days to the downside. This will at least be day number two to the upside out there. So I would say Boozy, Dan, could top out, uh, short-term top, well, some type of top, uh, could form between uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, after tomorrow, I mean, typically this, this doesn't make more than a three-day consecutive rally out there. That doesn't mean sell the position or anything. Everything looked really pretty good out there. So pay attention to the numbers. You've got those resistance levels. You know where sellers are, are sitting at right now. And if there's anything else you need on Vuzi, just write back, and we'll be happy to get that to you. But let's go to your second request. And the second request was to take a look at uh, ICU. So let's go take a look at ICU, which is trading at about 220. I'm going to confirm that. Yeah, trading at 220. This is C-Star Medical Holdings. And C-Star Medical Holdings right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that range runs from uh, 202 at the bottom for support and 234 resistance. 
CD9 count on the weekly time frame chart. Price dealing with its profiles, uh, resistance that is, that's because price is trading below the support level at 247. So 247 on, 246 that is, um, uh, 246, 247. We'll call it 247. 247 is going to be a real key area for you to uh, overcome out here with regard to ICU. And the monthly has been trading for uh, enough time for us to be able to get enough bar data to really produce any kind of uh, patterns out here. I'm going to change windows for a moment, Dan, because I have my trend tool set on the black background charts. And I just want to show you another element uh, to be paying attention to in the case of ICU. And that would be that little trend line out there. So you've got real good resistance up at that 230 level. This is ICU, this is the daily time frame. Price can clear that and you'd uh, be off to the races. And those races, of course, would only be to 247. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to our next request. This is from DPD inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Welcome. And the question is, uh, take a look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar gap down this morning, trading out at about 205.90. Let me just make sure. 
out here. It looks like maybe we fixed this little data flow issue. That would be a beautiful thing. No, we did not. It's trading at 207.78. That's a bummer. Uh, so, but we do know it's still, it did gap down. It is trading below the bottom of its profile out there. And the bottom of the profile is at 211.43. It's triggered a roads momentum indicator signal. And if price can close the day above 208.94 and you're at 207.90, It'll retain the roads momentum indicator bottom pattern that already was in place. Otherwise, it negates it, and it says it wants lower price. You're trading below profile support on a weekly basis. So DPD, the next likely target area that we see in Caterpillar, that is under the assumption that it does not close the day above 208.94. If it does not do that, then to the downside, the price target becomes 191.81. That's its next level of profile support that is present at the uh, moment out here. So let's see if there's some other patterns that we can identify out here in the case of Caterpillar. So let's look at how many days down are we at now inside of Caterpillar consecutive. This is going to be day number three. It typically does three to four bar moves out there. Several several twos, but I see a, a lot of threes and fours to the downside. So I would say that Caterpillar is likely to uh, form a short-term bottom by today or tomorrow out there. Uh, you need to see it or you'd want to see it on a 30-minute chart out here. I'm not suggesting that you take a long position or anything, but just to so you can do the play-by-play. -play. When we look at the 30-minute time frame chart, what's missing here is any kind of a bottom signal. So that's why I don't believe that it has uh, bottomed uh, today out here. And um, so, so we got that. What else can we find in Caterpillar? Boy, um, you know, it's got the weekly A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here. Um, you know, and that that looks like let's just switch over to the black background chart. It's just easier for me to draw those patterns there. And uh, that will be very specific and exact, quite frankly. So let's just take a look at the uh Let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. So on a weekly chart here, everybody can identify the A point. So that's pretty easy. That's the high. That was the high of January of 2023 out there. The B point that I would use is this uh, first move down into the uh, week of February 20th. And then you had a nice uh, couple week bounce out here, formed a high the week that began March the 6th. So you can see that we are now below. We're at the We've gotten down to the 1 to 1.618 level. So I would say if 191.81 does not hold that's the bottom of that monthly profile then we're looking at a move down to 189 geez stevie that's really big 191 versus 189 it's just indication of where price is really likely headed to inside of uh, caterpillar so what you watch for here is you watch for some type of bullish reversal candle to form that is oh geez it didn't go like didn't go live sorry now we're no, we're live. Yeah, okay. So I drew, I drew in this A to B equals CD to the downside. Sorry that it didn't switch over to those black background charts out there. But you can see that the 1 to 2, 1 to 2, A to B equals CD down pattern gets us into that 189 level. And you come over here to the monthly, 191.81 is the uh, bottom of its profile. And the trend line probably gets us in that 189 area. So I, I think we have a lot of indication that that's where it wants to go. The caveat is where does price close today? Because if price does close above 208.94, it still retains the Rose Mentum Indicator bottom signal that was uh, that it formed out here was confirmed on April the 10th. So hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Caterpillar and uh, DPD. I'd like more requests from you at some point in time. Looks like there's a couple of requests out here. Um, Spokane. Uh, Bob in Spokane, I, I don't know if you wanted me to look at those, but we're going to anyways because I don't have anything in the queue. ANVX uh, is one of the uh, instruments we're going to go take a look at out here. Let that uh, populate. ENVX is trading right now at its breakout level of support. Uh, the screen here shows it's trading at about 1098. I show on my other screen 1046. So it is breaking through breakout support, and it's confirming an A to B equals CD to the downside. So the B point, we'll come back and we'll draw. Which chart am I on, the white or back? Oh, I'm on the black. Okay, we'll just stay here. We'll draw the A to B equals CD pattern out there. So the A point out here, easy for everybody to identify. That's going to be the high that for at least on my screen right now at 331. The B point's going to be the low from April the 10th. The C point's going to be the high into the top of that profile on April 13th. We are now, and the volume on the B point was 6 million shares. We're at 7.3 million shares. 
So you're already at the 11.272. The next price projection level inside of ENBX, NOVIX Corp, would be down at about the $9 level. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly shows us that we're trading with inside its profile. And what we see out here is bullish structure profile support between 870 and 946. So all of this is matching what we just took a look at on the daily time frame. We didn't do one before the other and try to force anything, just narrating the charts and narrating the patterns. So with regard to ENVX, Bob, it does look like this is headed back towards that 870, 946-ish level out there. The next one that you had an interest in, or that you at least wrote the symbol down, was MC, where, is, where did it go? MCRB. So let's get MCRB up on our screen. MCRB. And that is uh, just simply series, Sirius Therapeutics, which at the moment is testing profile support. So it ran into trend line resistance. And right now it's dealing with the profile support that exists at 573. We're trading at 571. I would say if there's a close below 573, odds favor lower price. But lower price to where? We're going to switch over to our other charts out here because I don't see any other patterns that are worth paying attention to. Like let's 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 state this. We're trading above profile in the weekly. We're trading above profile in the monthly. Those are those are bullish signals out there. But let's go back and switch over to those white background charts. And let's go take a look at any other patterns, information that we can identify for. So when we take a look at this instrument, Series Therapeutics, MCRB out here on the weekly time frame. So again, this is a bit, we see a close below the bottom of its profile. That's at 573. Then the weekly is saying, hey, I may just be pulling back to retest support, which it's already done basically this week, and that's down at that level of 557. Price would have to close below 557 to then suggest to you and I that where price might want to get back to is 466, which is the top of that weekly profile out there. So we take this. We don't have enough data on the – well, the monthly is not providing us with much data other than – Price is trading above the top of that uh, profile. So let's take a quick peek here at its dance moves. And today looks like this will be bar number one of a move lower. The last several retracements out here have just simply been two bar knee jerk reactions out there. So it's possible you could get a, a short term bottom that forms by tomorrow out there. That's ticker symbol MCRB. So I hope that helps you out and gave the information that you were looking for on uh, both of those instruments, uh, Bob. Um, you bought the sell of debt finance. Okay, okay. So, uh, Phil, great. Uh, so we're headed to 618 most likely. Uh, nice shirt, Stevie. Uh, thank you. You know, so I, I wasn't with you. Yes, I recorded the show yesterday early. It's taken me a long time, and I'm still not anywhere near over uh, Dave's passing. Just just no way. But, um, you know, you, you do know I believe everything in life happens for us. So the force for me had to be to really get back into shape. Since Dave's passing, I'm down 22 pounds. I'm wearing shirts here, Phil, I haven't worn for years. And I've got more to go. And yesterday was a stress test. Just make sure the ticker is okay. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So you got uh, now you've got the uh, semis, the only indice trading to the downside. They're off 18 points. Um, we're going to have enough time to take like the SMHs, kind of get a feel for what's going on there. But we do have four requests that have come in. So let's get to those. The first one coming in from um, first one coming in from Nicholas. Nicholas writes in. Good morning, Steve. Would you please go over JPM for a short or not? Thanks. Have a great day. Absolutely. So right now, what you've got is uh, prices uh, trading above support, Nicholas, which is the uh, bottom of its daily profile, 135.80. So to the extent that you want to short JP Morgan, and price yesterday got back, back to where it had broken out, big gap to the upside, and that had volume of 43 million shares. Now, yesterday's move lower was 14 million shares. So yeah, maybe not on the short side. Right now, you're trading above its green oscillator and change line, which is printed at 136.56. This suggests to you and I that J.P. Morgan wants to make a move to 138.79 and then maybe 141.78 out there. So that would be the better place to to, uh, to consider a short. But, you know, we really have to go take a look at that financial sector, the XLF out there, because that did have an A to B equals CD to the upside. So we'll take a look at, I don't know if I'll have time to do that right now, but with regard to JP Morgan, your specific question is, with regard to, is, do I see a short out here? Well, I think yesterday's volume was telling you a ton. And price is now above uh, key support levels out there. The weekly chart, you're just consolidating with inside its uh, profile range between 134.63, where it did get down to yesterday and found support. And it's trading into its bearish structured profile area. That's between 140.02 and 143.26. The monthly chart suggests that if price can close out the month, and today is the 27th. So if it does close out the month above its oscillator and change zone, which is green, which is at 137 even right now, you'll get a close above that and the top of its profile, and those are bullish conditions. Now, it doesn't mean that price is going to be able to clear its most recent highs at the 144.34 area, but it would be a bullish outcome out there. So on the weekly, you know you're dealing with that resistance of that sell zone, that bearish structured sell zone. The monthly looks pretty good. Quite frankly, the daily looks pretty good as well, um, although it did generate a sell the D point pattern a couple of days ago with that gap to the downside. So that's another place or price target where we could see price head to, and that would be up until the 140.04 level. So with regard to J.P. Morgan, yesterday was two days to the downside. Now you got to expect that this will do two days to the upside out there, at least two or three days to the upside. So 
I say no short today and likely no short tomorrow. And that was J.P. Morgan. So, Nicholas, thanks for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Let's go to Alton's question. Alton wants to take like a ticker symbol VCYT. So give me a moment. Let me also make sure I'm in the right spot. I am VCYT. Let's actually read the question. The question goes like this. Hey, Steve, if you have time, your thoughts on BCYT, please. Thanks, as always. Well, you're welcome. So right now, if I take a look at BCYT, trading at about 2247. My system screen right now shows 2256, but it's really trading at 2247. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's consolidating with inside its daily profile. So your range out here, Alton, is between 2158 and 2325. On a weekly basis, what's price doing? Price is trading above profile. It's as simple as that. And if it can continue to hold the oscillator and change line, which it's um, you know testing right now, the oscillator and change line is really at 22.54. The price can continue to stay above that on a weekly basis. That's a bullish outcome. And the uh, monthly says, uh, boy, I'm really struggling to clear 24.83 right now. That is its oscillator and change line. We've seen four tests out of the last six months where price gotten up there and rejected that level and really re rejected 3022 as well. So 3022, but right now it's dealing with that 2493. So VCYT, I just see some consolidation patterns. It looks pretty good, but knowing that that 2493 is a significant level of resistance, I don't think it's a buy. It's most certainly not a, a short uh, here either. Uh, so I do hope that helps you out with regard to VCYT. On a 30-minute basis, it looks like this wants to continue to rally. It's just dealing with resistance levels from profiles. From the nice roads, momentum indicator bottom pattern yesterday afternoon at 3.30. So 22.79 is its next stop and above that 23.40. So Alton, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in as always. And we'll look forward to your next request. The next request, though, didn't come in from Alton. It came in from Roger B. And Roger wants to take a look at NXPI. So let's get over to take a look at NXPI, get those populated, and let's uh, read Roger's questions. I would like your opinion on NXPI as I saw my profit vanish, and if time, please uh, take a look at Qualcomm. So this gaps to the downside today. You're trading at 159.27. It shows up as a potential hammer candle. We really won't know till day's end, but boy, this thing has been making lower highs and lower lows out there. You're trading below profile on the weekly basis, which is 166.48. So you close below that. That says change in trend, and that says that price should go target its swing point. That swing point was a TD9 count bottom for the week of October the 14th. And the high out there is 151.96. And the low so far today has been 155.31. So it hasn't gotten down to that swing point. I would assume that it is volume on the trade today. You're already 1.9 million shares. That's pretty decent volume. So it also on the daily base wants to hit that TD9. So this had a TD9 count bottom on the daily and the weekly, Roger, out here and the monthly. Now, that is a beautiful thing. But here, I say the volume on that daily time frame is 1.4 million or 1.9 already. So you, we know we're moving down with volume out there. The question is, what's that candle at day's end? Because we certainly can draw an A to B equals CD pattern in here, which we will do. I'll go do that on my other screen just so that it's clear and we can see the A to B equals CD pattern. So give me a moment here. We'll switch over to this. This time, make sure that you hit the go button. There we go. So we're live. Now let's go ahead and open it up. And with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern out here, the A point, very easy to identify. The A point out here is on the trading day of February the uh, 2nd. The B point that I'm going to use is right down here, this nice little hammer candle that formed on March the 28th. That was also wave number seven on the way down. So another nice reason to, uh, to, to mark that. And the C point is going to be that retracement up into a high that formed the week of, uh, oh, this is a daily chart, the day of March the 31st. So now we can see the B point, which had volume of 2.3 million shares. That was passed yesterday with 2.6 million shares. So that gave you the, or two days ago, I should say, that gave you the confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. We're on the left-hand side of that C to D run. That tells us we should do more than a one-to-one -one move. So Roger, with regard to NXPI, it's signaling to you and I once to get down to 151.46 or thereabouts. But if you did get a bullish reversal candle, you would get a confirmed by the D point pattern. So what happens if today turns out to be a bullish hammer candle? Well, it's also a gap to the downside. So those become very tricky out there. And I'll just simply default back to the weekly chart that says caution, Will Robinson. 
you're below the bottom of its profile level. And I'd say watch the monthly chart as well, because if you do close below 159.24, this thing wants lower price. Let's go take a look at Qualcomm. We'll switch over to those charts here. Now, those are on the white background charts in a moment, but we'll pull it up here on these black backgrounds, QCOM. And with regard to Qualcomm out there, this had formed a, this is going to negate a TD9 count bottom if it closes below the low from uh, two days ago. And that low was April 25th, and the actual low was 113.68. You're 113.04. So if price closed below 113.68 today, Roger, this suggests lower price. Now, price is taken on the B point of an A to B equals CD that has 8.9 million shares, and that low is not likely to get passed with volume today. What are we at? 1.9? Not likely to happen. And that's at 113.14. So if you get it close below that, 113.04 right now, you'll form the A to B equals CD. You just won't get it confirmed with volume. That doesn't mean that it doesn't play out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I think we're going to close out the show, uh, at least take a look at uh, Sober. Charles writes in. He says, Steve, thank you. And let me know your thoughts on SLV. Thanks. Kind regards. Um, this is uh, Charles. So, Charles, I, what I've done here is I put the SL here. This is this. Uh, thank you for the question, first of all. And the reason is, is uh, that I put both the SLV chart on the left hand side and then the actual underlying instrument, the silver contract. 
And the reason is because what we really base our decisions upon, Charles, is the underlying contract, the future contract. If I were to only pull up the SLV, I would be giving you some bad news. Now, it still may be bad news that turns out to a, a bad, bad advice. I should say not bad news, bad advice um, based upon its chart patterns. For example, when I pulled up the SLV for you, I said, geez, this is going to form. This may form a TD nine count bottom today. It'll do that if it closes below the bar of five of, of bar number five, the close of bar number five. That happens to be twenty two ninety eight. Ha! But I said, hey, what's that? I don't remember seeing silver it's being in a TD nine count bottom pattern. So I put that chart up, and now you see it, and you can see we are definitely not in a TD nine count bottom pattern out here. So what we do have between the two instruments out here, Charles, is a consolidation right now between their profile levels of support. In the case of the SLV, that's 2246 for support and 2335 for resistance. In the case of silver, it's 2466 for support and 2550 for resistance out there. So the thoughts on this is you're just inside a consolidation. Um, you know, where's the best place to buy silver? Well, it's really in that range of 2466 and to 2487. Unless price closes below 2466, but it's a bullish structured level of support. If it does, you just jettison that position at that stage and you wait to possibly rebuy silver at about 2314. So please keep an eye on the silver contract out there versus just the SLV. Lastly, let's just real quickly run over, take a look at the SMH. As I mentioned that we go take a look at that. We just have a, a moment out here. The SMHs have a clear A to B equals CD to the downside. If we were to get a bullish hammer candle today, and that's a possibility, it's a possibility, you would then generate a buy the D point pattern. Price right now is testing swing point support that's got 4.9 million. You're only 1.8 as we speak. Folks, stay tuned. I'll see you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there.